Flavour Magazine is a youth lifestyle publication that focuses on music, fashion, entertainment, young entrepreneurs, and just all the fun and cool things that young people like. Our target audience are 18 to 24 year olds, and you can view us online at www.flavormag.co.uk or in print, which you print bi-monthly. I guess it. I guess it's a bit different. We didn't do it the traditional way. It's kind of because the magazine was already there. We kind of just went head first right into it and just began working, going in production and distributing the magazine. And we've kind of learned everything as we've gone along. Learned about advertising, learned about publishing and printing and different weights of paper and and obviously the journalism side I had down and my business partner had the graphic side and printing side down because that was his background because he'd worked at. GQ and Arena and PlayStation while doing the design side. So I guess it was a combination of both our skills that kind of helped for us to be able to create this product. The biggest challenge I would say was the financial challenge of it. Um, just kind of getting advertisers to advertise and making sure those invoices were paid on time so that they can pay the team and pay the staff and to get the magazine out there on time and to be able to build the website and we also do events as well as a, as a brand so kind of just to be able to kind of have that money there to be able to kind of to make everything run smoothly so that's the biggest challenge. In an interview especially in the media you know so many people want a job within media within journalism working on a magazine and so when you come to that interview, make sure that you're prepared, make sure you've done the research for the publication, make sure you've kind of looked at the last few issues, know what kind of articles um, have been in there. Um, come, if you've, if you've written anything, bring your portfolio with you and make sure you do write because if you come to an interview and you, you want to be a journalist or you want to write for my publication and you haven't written anything, that doesn't really make sense to me. And also what, what really annoys me when people say, I say, what magazines are you reading? Or what websites are you reading? Oh, I don't read magazines. Oh, I don't look at websites. So why do you want to work in the industry if you're not reading the magazines? Who's going to read your writing if, um, if you're not even reading what other people want to know about? So it always makes me laugh when I, and I, you'd be surprised how much I hear that. And also before the interview, if you do email me for any tips or for directions, don't spell my name wrong. And don't spell flavor wrong either, because <laughs> a lot of people try and spell it the kind of urban way. No, with the normal UK spelling, F-L-A-V-O-U-R. <laughs> the thing is with the media is, obviously qualifications are good, and you know it is good to go to university to expand your knowledge and to kind of get the kind of core skills, um, core writing skills, core design skills, or depending on whatever area you want to work work on within a magazine however it's not always necessarily sometimes you can get in kind of through different avenues and I'd say the biggest one is work experience and getting an internship so you know right off to the different publications write to the editor write to the different departments within the publication and ask if you can come in and get experience whether it's for one day whether it's for a week whether it's for a month or even longer the more experience you get on your CV then the more that will help you Plus, it's a very context-based industry. I don't think there's ever been a job that I've got within the media where it's been because I've sent my CV in and then they've decided to employ me. A lot of the time, I've got employed through recommendations. And, you know, that's what happens a lot within this industry. So start getting out there, start networking, start doing internships, and start a blog or write for other, or write for other websites, even if it is for free. Obviously, yes. We don't like working for free and times are hard, but ultimately there's somebody out, else out there that's hustling hard and doing all that and they're the one that will be the next editor in one, two, three, four, five years time because they've worked hard to get there. At entry level position, depending on the publication, you could be asked to do a variety of tasks. You know, if it's a smaller publication, then um, with a smaller team, then you could be doing anything from doing the interviewing to editorial to updating the website to resizing images within Photoshop to might even send you on like an editing course and you might be out filming, filming for the website because so many magazines, obviously the online profile is very important. Also managing their social networks, you know, with the Twitter, the Facebooks, for all of that, because obviously that's needed to kind of continue to engage with the readers and the fans. So you could be doing anything from as little as making a cup of tea 
to going out and interviewing your favourite star or politician, depending on what side of, side of journalism or magazines you're interested in. So it's just, I think it's more about just making yourself useful because the more you make yourself useful in an organisation, then the more responsibilities they'll give you and the more they'll be able to rely on you and the quicker you'll move up the ladder. There's no one set salary for an entry level position when you're working in publishing. So if you're working for a magazine, if you're working for a newspaper, whether it's a daily, whether it's a national, um, whether it's a regional, you know, it all changes kind of the rate of pay you get. You know, it could be from as little as 10,000 up to 22 or 24,000, depending on kind of what position you're doing. Um, so I would say don't go into the media for the money. Because if you want money, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be an accountant. Because <laughs> you definitely, there definitely is money to be made in the media industry, but it doesn't come straight away. So if you want a career where money is your motivation, then look somewhere else. But if you want a career where it's creative, where it's um, you meet interesting people, and obviously and you do make money, obviously over time, then definitely media is a career for you. I guess that's the beauty of working in the media industry. There's no such thing as a typical day, and that's why so many people want to work in the industry. I mean, stay at Flavor, you know, this week alone we've had um, The Risk, who were on The X Factor, coming to the studio. We've had um, Leandro Penna, who was um, Katie Price's ex-boyfriend, who you might have seen on their ITV2 series. We've had um, Gabriella from Made in Chelsea. Um, you know, we, we have so many different people kind of coming in and out through the door, shooting and interviewing, maybe filming acoustic sessions. And, you know, so no such days the same, you know, we could be on the phone, kind of advertising, updating the website, doing competitions. Um, and that's why it's such an interesting job because no day is the same and you're always meeting different people and it's fun to do. as. But it is also hard work because, you know, you might be here really early, but you might not be leaving until late. As I always say in the media, don't don't make plans in the evening. <laughs> not till on the day anyway. 